Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Um, this morning, I don't know whether I'm preaching or I'm just exhorting you or I'm just encouraging you. Um, there are one or two things the Lord taught me. He said there are principally seven things he wants me to imbibe in life. He said there are about seven principles he wants me to imbibe in life. I will share just one or two with you which will help in line with what we're looking at this morning. When the angel appeared to Mary and said, you will have a son. He shall be called Jesus. He will save the world from their sin. Mary asked a question. According to the principle you set, according to the order that you made, oh God, there must be a man for this to happen. God said, to her. That order is for an order of people. You are above that order. Say after me, say I'm above the normal order. You must believe. When the age when the Lord said to Abraham, said, This time next year, Sarah shall have a son. Sarah gave three reasons. Number one, I'm wax old. Number two, it has ceased to be with me after the man of meaning, the cycle and the womb is dead. So number three, myself and my husband, we've ended. Pleasure years back. And the Lord asks, why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for the Lord? In Matthew 3, 9, Jesus told the Pharisees, do not say we have Abraham as our father, for God is able from stones Raise children for Abraham. What does all this mean? God does not need your womb. <laughs> he doesn't need your tubes. He doesn't need your eggs. He doesn't need your cycle. You know, in Jeremiah 33, First in Genesis 8, God spoke when Noah, I, I, I guess I'm just exhorting you. And I, and I want this mindset. He says, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who though in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation and made himself to the form of man. The mindset we must imbibe. And I want you to imbibe this mindset too. In Genesis 8, 22, it says, as long as the earth remaineth, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. Summer and winter, cold and heat. Then he said, day and night will never miss. Who said it? God. Then in Jeremiah chapter 3, he says, if you can, now he's boasting of that order. If you can break my covenant of day and night, he was talking about the mercies, that it cannot be stopped. Just like I'm telling you, if you can break the covenant of day and night. But you know what? Joshua broke it. Suspended day and took night into oblivion. 
by a command under an inferior covenant. Abraham said to the rich man in hell in Luke 16, he says, no man can cross between hell and paradise for there's a great gulf. No one has ever done it. No one can. Jesus crossed it. Then he don't know me. He's actually looking for somebody to break his word. So what he's saying is, can I find one person who has, instead of a womb, stone? Let's bring children out from there. So it's an aberration to say, the Bible says, Abraham's organs do dead. So the sperm count makes no relevance. Did you hear me? It makes what? No relevance. So he's looking for a man who has stones, a woman who has stones in the womb that he can bring out children from. He's yet to find. He's asking, can I find from you? Can I find from you? He said, I boasted of my covenant of day and night. It was God that suspended day. He could have said, no, Joshua, I said no man can suspend my... So when Joshua spoke it, he didn't speak in the name of Jesus, which carries more authority. He just said it as a leader of Israel. And God held it day and night, and God contradicted his own covenant for a man to have his way. So, the only time we can say we have a crisis on ground is not when you have a stone in your womb. It's when you don't know what to say. When Joshua spoke right, when Jesus spoke right, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. You know, Abraham had told all of them that no man can cross. For the first time in the history Abraham looked like he didn't know what he was saying. He said, no one can. He believed it will be everlasting doors. The doors opened. Jesus crossed from hell to paradise. If God tells you it cannot be done, and that's why I love James and John. They asked the Lord, grant that we sit at your right and your left at the regeneration. The Lord said, you don't know what you are asking. This request is beyond you. It's only my father that can grant it. If I were to say that, ask your father that we ask for it. For you said, yeah, 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 yeah. there is nothing you ask your father that he will deny you. They ask him on our behalf if we can ask him. He probably would have gotten it. But they chose an authority. He said, do you know the implication of what you are saying? Do you have an idea what you just asked? Let me give you an idea what you just asked. Are you able to drink from my cup and be baptized with my... They said we can't. Then he said you will. So the Lord is looking for one person who will say, I can, I can, and the Lord will say, you will. So if I say, you will cross with your futures, it has no relevance so whether you have a womb or tubes or eggs, it's not relevant. It has no bearing. It has nothing to do with your spam count. What it needs from you is your faith to believe. And how will it reckon that faith, which is what I want to share with you this morning, what it demands from you. After you have done what is expected of you, You know, is this Psalm 138 or so? Is he allows the earthquake. He allows the rumbling, the storms, the tsunamis for just one purpose. For one person to prove his word. Just one. And that's all he's looking for. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let this mind be in you. And that's what Mary asked. And people used, they're used to it. So how can this be seen? I know not a man. This is the order. No man from creation 
ever got it done this way before? They said, Mary, then you are the first. They didn't say you are the, they say you are the first, right? You are the first. Yeah. So what does God require of you to bring children from stones? What does God require from you? To accomplish what no one has accomplished. We say the true crisis is not what you are facing. Then what crisis are you facing? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. We've seen a single woman at 56 get married. Right? We've seen it. 56. Right? Yes. We've seen it. So there is really no crisis of marriage. Right? So there's no crisis of marriage. So what crisis do we have? Let these things seek in you. You are not having any crisis until you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say to God into the hearing of God. Then you have a crisis. So it's not the person that is yet to marry that has a crisis. It's the person that doesn't know what to say to the ears of God that has a crisis. So these three things I will leave with you to imbibe in your life. There is no crisis outside not knowing the right words to speak into the ears of the economy is not a crisis. In the midst of this crisis, some have been made millionaires. In the midst of all what we are seeing, this is the time of some people. I'm sure you know that. This is the time some are smiling to the bank. This time some are sinking. Another government will come. People will call it prosperous. Some will drown. Another new set will rise. It has nothing to do with all that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. When they ask Peter, who do men say they ask you? So some say you are Elijah, some say you are... Who do men say? say you are Christ, the son of the most high God? Jesus said, my father gave you what to say for that reason. From this day forward, you are blessed eternally. You are blessed on earth. You are blessed in the heavens. You are blessed in your loins. You are blessed in your lineage. For answering the question. One question. You are blessed in your genealogy. You are blessed in your family. My God, I give you the keys of the... What? For answering a question. For saying, answering a question right into the ears of God. My prayer is that he will give you what to say into his hearing. When they told Mary, this will happen in your life. What did tell me when that happened was that she said... Bid unto me according to your word. The Bible says, and the angel departed. Case closed. What brought the revelation to pass? The answer she gave into the ears of God. When they told Zechariah, you shall have a son. He said, how can that be seen and old? Bam! He was struck dumb. So as I've spoken, you will enter the new year laughing. There's an answer. There's an answer. There's an answer. You must respond to the Almighty for what I've said. When you respond well. When you respond well. When you respond well. Tell me what is not selling. You will sell yours well. Nayla said, why are you drunk? He said, this is my response. He said, then go in peace. It's a response. It's a word. It's an answer. It's an utterance into the ears of the Almighty. And that's the message I bring to you this morning. The Lord said, he's waiting. His ears are open. What are you going to tell him? He wants to hear what you will say. So when he hears it, so then 2021, 2020 will be determined by him, not by the economy, not by your health status, not by the home status. That's the message I bring to you from God. It says you must all respond. You must all speak into his ears. You must answer him. He has sent me with a word to tell you, not 20 years time, January 1, 2020, you will enter laughing. Amen. You will enter dancing. Amen. Then he now said, 
you must respond to it into his ears. And what you say will determine what will happen. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. You know, I found out in life there are seven authorities you must respond to. I don't know what it means. It means about me and seven. Seven pillars of faith. Right? <laughs> seven laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Seven laws of death. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe I should wear clothes of seven. <laughs> I mean, so I don't know. They were so one wing. Then they would say, I've gone out. They just saw the other wing. About seven authorities you respond to. And each one carries a blessing for your life. Including the treasures of darkness that is kept in the archives of Satan. He will only release it when you answer his own question too. He says, when you come before the council, the synagogue, the magistrates, and the powers, meditate not on what you shall say, for in that hour it shall be given you what to say. For it is not you that speaketh, but the spirit of your father that speaketh through you. One with God to be given by. And he says, I'm waiting. My ears are open. You mustn't speak wrongly. You must not. And that's why the Lord will sanctify your tongue. Amen. And the spirit of faith will walk through you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That which you will alter will be pleasing in his ears. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When they ask Solomon, what do you want? He said, give me a wise and a designing. And the Bible says, that which he answered... Please the Lord. And the Lord said, this I have given. That which you did not ask for, I have also added. Long life, riches. And they began to add, add. Why? Because he answered a question correctly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 6-9. It says, the word is near thee. That's the first clue. The word is near thee. It says, say not in thy heart. We shall go to the heavens to bring Jesus down. And it says, who shall go to the deep to raise him back up to life? He said, but the word is near thee. In your heart and in your mouth, the word of faith which will preach, saying, if you say in your mouth, that Jesus has been raised from the dead and you believe in your heart. He said, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So he said, if you don't know what to say, say, repeat what has been told you. That's what he's saying. Start with that. Say, and that means I go about say, January 1, 2020, I'm laughing into the new year. That's all. He said, start with that. If the spirit of faith is yet to say to you what to say, then repeat what he has told you to him. He says, you are blessed. Say, oh God, I am blessed. Say, start with that. Say, but you must speak. So if you don't know what to start with, repeat with what he told you. He can't abhor what he says. He can't resent what he says. He can't fight what he says. He speaks what he likes. So when he hears it back, he must like it. <laughs> That's why I said, I'm just giving you, I'm just exhorting you. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. In Eli and Hannah, she didn't like what she heard. She didn't like what she heard. 
So she repeated something else, and then he blessed her. In Mark 11, from verse 12 to 14, we all know the story. And here God is teaching a principle. And you know, when God says God will raise children from stones, you automatically know God is not going to put stone by the roadside and say, stones, become children. No, he's not going to do that. Praise the Lord. Even if they have to use stones, he's going to have the stones planted in somebody's womb. And then he's going to get the prophet to speak to the person that from these stones, you shall have children. And then the person, because he has ordained a principle, which he highlighted in Mark 11, he said, this is the God kind of faith. That if you say to the sick command tree, be thou uprooted from the roots, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say. You shall have what you say. So I will take what he has told me. I will say to him, according to Mark 11, 23, I will say it and say it and say it. When he sees there's no doubt in my heart and I believe what I'm saying, it's two options. He gives me what he wants him to say. Or you honors what I say. Praise the Lord. Matthew 12, it says, A good man, out of the good treasure in his heart, causeth good things to come to pass, while an evil man out of the evil treasure in his heart causes, that's Matthew 12, 33 to 37, causeth evil things to come to pass. Say, by thy words you shall be justified, by thy words you shall be condemned. So what is he saying here? If he has not told you what to say, take what he told you, apply it with Mark eleven twenty three. But don't do nothing. Do something. Am I complicating? Don't do nothing. Do something. For you are a speaking spirit. And he is waiting. He says, as you have spoken in my ears, so shall I do unto you. So God says, don't be quiet. You know, I often say, it's faith that gets the job done while the anointing determines how long it will take to get it done. In, um, I guess, I guess in Mark 8, over verse 22 to 25, there was a blind man brought to Jesus. And when they brought it to him, the Bible says he spat and put it in his eyes, laid hands on him, and told him, open, tell me what you see. He said, I see men like trees. Now, if a man is seeing men like trees, meaning he's not seeing well, but he's seeing. Meaning, the procedure has begun, but it has not ended well. The Bible says he put his hand on him again, did the same thing and said, tell me what you see. Then he said, I see clearly. So it is getting slowed. It's getting slow because of the anointing, which you can be for prayers, with prayers. So the Lord is saying, I enjoin you to do two things. Take the word you have been given and return it to the Lord. Then pray for a speedy manifestation. Let me tell you, if anyone by January 1, 2020, doesn't have any occasion to laugh, to rejoice, to glorify God. I'm not talking of your life. Even the unbelievers are alive. To glorify God, nothing remarkable. He says, don't blame anyone. Number one, he says, tell me back what I told you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell me back what I told you. Repeat it to me. Say back in my ears. I sent it, return it. Number two, take that word and pray. 
He said, leave the rest. If you have done every other thing, you have sold, you have done what you need to do. He said, I guarantee you by January 2020, you will be in a state of laughter. Amen. You know, um, I shared this before. A young man, the father died, and um, the uncle, the father's brother, took over their property and subjected them to partial slavery. And he was in charge of the property. I was told he was in Oboni. said, nobody can touch him. And I remember one day he was in a service like this. And I said, there's somebody sitting on your property. That the word is yet to come. We're still revealing. And he's holding on to your father's property. And he says he will not let go. And there's nothing you can do. And then I said, today, his life is taken from him. And your property returned. That was the word. Now, he got home, he said, when he left church that day, he said he raised his hand on the road and was like, what was going on? He said, Father, I thank you. Finally, our property has been returned to us. And the man that has troubled us is history. He said he was going on the street. People will be coming, then they move away. You know, you don't, if you walk like this, when people are coming, they just move out of the way. If the road is tight, and you want people to move away, just like this. Hey, hey, hey. Just, they just move away. They say, it's God banana. So, he said, people are moving out. He didn't care. He knows what he's been facing. And he was repeating what I was saying. He said, he led ready and was going on the road. About 15 minutes walk to the house. He kept saying everything. He said, today his life is taken away from him. And today, my father's property is returned. Because he didn't know what to say, so he was repeating what was told him. He said, God in the house, the uncle came in, looked at all of them, went into his room. And after about 10 minutes, they had a loud noise of a man that was held by the throat, lifted up into the air and smashed on the ground. And he was the only one in the room. That's an angel of God. When they entered the room, they broke the door open, he was in a coma. His life was yet to be taken, but he was in a coma. They rushed him to, I think it was Luth, they said then. He said he was there for about three days. Why was he there for three days? I'll show you. He said they kept visiting, he was still in coma. Vincent was still in coma. Vincent, he said, one day he visited. Everybody had gone, and he just went to, like, the balcony. I said, Lord, is this man troubling us? He said, his life shall be split. If he's the one, let him be taken now. <laughs> so when he turned, he was dead. Why? God was waiting to repeat, to take him out. What was told him? I believe you have been blessed by that message, and I know your faith has been built up, and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information or how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.